I think. So you're, are you disputing that on average women are more intelligent yes, than men? I agree, <laughs> the future yeah. of academia is unequivocally female. Do you deny that? I agree that the future of academia is bleak. <laughs> and okay. Do you think you would come to regret doing the whole, Not me, the but I think some people would. You don't think there's a chance you'll come to regret it? No. But based yeah. off the stats, it would seem the religious men are less inclined to virtue. No. If they're not watching a, that's, that's porn and buying sex. That's ridiculous. You're Welcome right. back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we're going to be watching Michael Knowles take three feminists who have a pen and paper in front of them to show that they mean business to school in the best way possible. You see, Smooth Mickey, as I call him, is a man of taste and class and a man that is pleasant in debate, but also unwavering in his beliefs. And what's more is that he always ends up winning people over and making them like him, especially the ladies, because he is Smooth Mickey after all. Smooth Mickey. Let's get into it. What is feminism? Um, I think the... The most common definition is the social, political, and economic equality between the sexes. So according to that definition, I would definitely identify as a feminist. Okay. Yeah. In general, I agree with that definition. I believe that we should not be discriminated unfairly on the basis of sex, if I had to add any addition to feminism. I would agree with all that. And then I would also add on just kind of adding more cultural currency to just female spaces, women's interests, and just women's proclivities in general. I actually think feminism does the opposite of that in practice. And frankly, going all the way back to the beginning of feminism in the 18th century, probably my definition of feminism would be Gloria Steinem's definition. She was the very famous feminist of the second wave, mm -hmm. uh, which is that a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Feminism is the idea that men and women are not complementary, they're not different and helpful to one another, but they're identical and indiscernible. That they're, you know, there are some superficial differences. You ladies might be a little prettier perhaps than I am, but all in all, we're basically exactly the same. And I, I don't think that's true. I think it's a false view of human nature, and I think it's harmful to everybody and especially harmful to women. Right. I've worked with Gloria Steinem's company, Women's Media Center, for like four years back My in My condolences. <laughs> and Obviously, that's like a more crass interpretation of, I think, what she meant by that, which I think is more so, she's more so um, characterizing the fact that women in general, when they're taught how to self-actualize, it's typically tied to contingency on a man and getting married and starting a family versus men. When they're told um, the ways to self-actualize, it doesn't necessarily require a woman. So obviously her saying a woman needs a man the way a fish needs a bicycle sounds crass and like she's being a bit, bit misandrous and obviously some radical interpretations may take it that way. But I think what she's trying to say is that women, you can like define yourself and your career and your potential outside of simply marriage and children. What do you mean by the phrase self-actualize? Um, just like live up to your potential, you know, use your mm -hmm. rational faculties, you know, use the design of your potential in your brain. Uh, I agree that I want to live up to my highest potential. I want women to live up to their highest potential. I want total human flourishing. But I think you've given away the game on the radical and liberal foundation of feminism, which is the notion that it comes purely from the self. It's a matter of self-liberation that, that I can do totally self-sufficiently as if I were an island unto myself. But no man is an island unto himself. And mm -hmm. so I didn't make myself. I uh, didn't create the family that I was born into. I didn't create the community that I was born into, the country that I was born into. I, I take the opposite view of the liberal view. The liberals say that man is fundamentally an individual. The conservatives would say, no, man is a social creature. You know, man is a political animal. And so the irony, I think, of someone like a Gloria Steinem saying that we, we or insinuating that we just want women to live up to their fullest potential is that the, the way that she and the feminists have done it is to totally erase women. Mm -hmm. And I think this goes back way further than the second wave. You sometimes hear conservatives, the squishy kind, they say, we love the feminism, but only the, you know, the second wave, not the third wave, or we like the first wave, not the second, or whatever, we're on like the 10th wave now. But it's been a problem from the beginning. Even Mary Wollstonecraft, who, who founds feminism with the vindication of the rights of woman, uh, she writes that uh, providence has created men in such a way that they are, um, more inclined to virtue and they're more endowed with virtue. And I think that's exactly what Gloria Steinem thinks because the, the way that second wave feminism actually 
was practiced was it denied the virtues particular to women and it said the only way to be virtuous and to flourish is to be a man. So if women want to be virtuous and flourish, they got to dress like men and they got to have the same attitudes towards sex as men and they got to work in the workplace exactly as men do and they just have to pretend to be men. Mm -hmm. But I think that's very uh, disrespectful to women and harmful to them because if a woman tries to be a man, she's always going to fail. Just look at the Penn swim team now when, <laughs> when the men compete against the women swimmers and, and defeat them. This is why some feminists wisely are turning against the transgender ideology. I think women are great. Women have a wonderful nature, and when women are fully women, they can really flourish. And when they pretend to be men, they get miserable. See, this is an interesting one here, guys. The origins of feminism. I used to think the same way as Michael Knowles just said then, as in first wave feminism was good. They were fighting for a great cause and they made such progress and they were all very brave. And then second wave, eh, and then third wave is when it really went off the rails. But then I realized that that's not true at all. It's always been dark, very, very dark. There has not been a time in the entire feminist movement when the leaders of the movement were not total psychopaths, hell-bent on destroying the fabric of our society. And this is detailed in a book called Occult Feminism by Rachel Wilson that I actually just did a review of on my Twitter page. And if you guys would like to see my book reviews, then you can follow me on Twitter. I also post funny memes and videos and other very thoughtful things. Jake Rattle SNK, Twitter and Instagram for those who are interested. And the next part is just great. And boy, oh boy, do I have some receipts after this. So what do you think the ideal form of marriage is? Like the woman goes to college and then she meets a guy in college and then she taps out of her career? I don't know that going to college is really great for anybody these days. I'm, I'm pro-education, obviously. I mean, and I'm, I'm not even one of these conservatives who says, you know, you should all just study engineering or whatever. You know, <laughs> I think that's bunk. I think you should read old books and, and uh, a yourself. Uh, but I don't think most colleges accomplish this these days, inc including the really fancy colleges, Harvard, Yale, Princeton. I don't know that maybe you can get an education there. I'm not totally convinced you can. And so, uh, yeah, I get women should be educated. But, you know, frankly, these days, <laughs> you send your kids to a homeschool co-op, they'll start learning Latin in the third grade. Uh, you send your kids on the track to go to Yale or Harvard, and they're probably not going to know anything by the time they graduate. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I would love m my wife to be educated. My wife is extremely educated. And I would love my wife to be a wife and a mother. And I guess the, the image that I think of for marriage is not as, you know, the, the modern way of talking about it where you say, this is my partner. It sounds like a gay accounting firm, you know. This is, oh, this is my total indistinguishable partner. No, I want a wife, man, mm -hmm. you know. And I want a mother for my children. I want to be a father. And that in involves different roles and that involves complementarity. Um, well, that's what I'm asking. So are you saying that, like, maybe they'll get educated outside of college reading books or whatever? And then after that, they should focus, like, at age 23, 24, getting married and then not pursuing a career and yeah, focus I mean, on family life? Yeah, I'm not going to prescribe exactly at what age people ought to get married. They ought, certainly ought to get married younger. I wish I'd gotten married younger. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, but you would prescribe that they uh, focus on a career with precedence. Generally, generally speaking, I think women will be less happy if they are going to the widget factory to work for Mr. McGillicuddy so that they can make money that I will, I will then receive from my wife to pay some other woman to raise our children. Mm -hmm. I think that's an extremely inefficient and disordered way to have a marriage, and I don't think it makes anybody particularly happy. I guess it confuses me coming from a trad con because you guys believe in the design of a lot of things. You believe in like the design of sex and what's like the most optimal use of sex. Why did God like give us sex? Of, so like yes, and you would say like the end of sex would be to pair bond and reproduce. So if women were not meant to pursue careers, why would God, according to your Christian purview, you're Christian, right? Yeah. Like equip us with so many rational, rational faculties. Like why are women so good at like aerospace engineering, nanotech, uh, pediatrics, I don't know if I'd say they're so good at aerospace engineering. Why are women, why are <laughs> women scoring higher there, than you, you guys know. in I'm every saying, subject? Why is yeah, that? they're not totally represented in these fields. But, My question uh, is sure. if Tradcons use God as like the their purview for, you know what I mean? Use our faculties as the metric well, you for don't what even we have should to be, be pursuing. Religious about this. Why is it that women are now out-graduating men like basically two to one, but then you guys are prescribing- Because the colleges are total nonsense now and they have a bunch of fake majors and it's a scam. It's fake major because this is now we have more female first year associates right it, yeah and law school is largely a scam I guess too my, and you've got a glut of lawyers well my question is jobs. why would god equip us with these things these faculties if god did not want us as women to pursue these faculties and instead abandon a first step for marriage and kids the premise of your question 
is that raising children and running a family in the domestic economy is not a rational activity. It's not that it's a rational activity, but why equip us to be so good at STEM and college and all these pursuits? What could be more important than raising a a family? I'm saying why give women the ability to both have a child and still be able to read like intellectual texts or to educate the child. Aerospace engineer. Well, that's a thing. You can wait to raise your kid to be an aerospace engineer. Wait, wait, but you can't be an aerospace engineer yourself. (laughs) Women can if they like. They generally don't do that. No, I'm asking. So is that your position that God equipped women to be as good at STEM to outgraduate men, all to just yeah. pursue not, homeschooling you know, for their children? If you look at like Fields Medal recipients, uh, Larry Summers got fired from Harvard for, for pointing this out, but uh, this is the top prize in mathematics. Uh, until uh, about 10 years ago, no woman had ever won the prize, and now I think one woman has won it. And I'm not knocking, I, there are plenty of women who are much more intelligent than me. The reason Larry Summers, who's a as far as social scientists goes, it is a very respected one, and he's a big lib. But uh, he pointed out that the reason why men tend to dominate in the, the uh, highest intellectual fields uh, is because, not because men are simply smarter than women, but because the bell curve of intelligence for men is wider than that of women. So, but for a society, isn't, uh, it, isn't it like, the societies that allow women to work, even us, if we hadn't had women, we brought in like trillions of dollars to the economy to take out half of the minds in the world. In, in the world yeah, because I think life the is bell about curve, more than money. The top. I agree, but if you want a flourishing, wealthy society, you can't do that by eliminating fl- women think, from the workforce. I agree that we're wealthier today than we were 50 years ago. I'm not sure that we're flourishing more than we are. I mean, we are literally a dying society, right? We haven't had above replacement births since 1971. Would you yeah, be okay well, with immigration as a way to? That's that's why we have mass migration. But mass migration causes all sorts of social social problems, Wait, which is why it's, it's deeply Before we pivot, I, that, I do want to yeah. pin down your position on this. So yes, the bell yeah. curve is wider for men, but on average, the average women are smarter than the average men. Obviously, at the ends the, of the curves, there's that wouldn't there's that more would unintelligent men and more first, high intelligent. The first thing you said that wouldn't wouldn't imply the second, right? If it's the, not if implied. It, that's just the fact is the bell curve is um, wider for men. Like there's more right. unintelligent so that, so that men and more you, intelligent men. Are you talking about Guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you like watching Smooth Mickey, if you like these breakdowns, then chuck a big like on the video below and also if you haven't subscribed to the channel and if you're getting heaps of value from this video if sometimes you think this guy's actually not so bad i'd love to have you back to it about the greater male variability hypothesis is that i'm saying there's there's on average women are more intelligent than men but if you look at the most intelligent people they're more likely to be men if if you look at the least intelligent people they're less likely to be men so i'm asking you from your christian purview because if you're a nihilist you're atheist you could just be like oh that's randomized who cares it doesn't necessarily mean it's best for society you're a nihilist you can't say anything at all you know because nothing means anything (laughs) well that was my point if you're a nihilist you could just say those curves should not be indication of how we should live society but as a christian if you think sex is most optimized for certain purposes you would probably think intelligence is best optimized for certain purposes so why would god equip the average woman to be smarter than men do you think it's just for homeschooling their children again the claim that you made at first which is that men and women have uh, bell curves the men's bell curve being wider than the woman's would not imply that the average woman is smarter than the average man oh, no, no. it would line them the up exactly the curve itself right? yeah. d- implies or actually indicates that no, on average extremes no, right. no, no. Would, if you actually look at the curves at the top it's women the women's curve is taller than the men's curve the the <laughs> the, but the the IQ of the curve would be on on the x-axis, right? That's where you get the extremes. So I think. So you're, are you disputing that on average women are more intelligent yes, than men? I, <laughs> as would Larry Summers, as would the people who have studied this. But again, I think it's secondary to the point. The, your your point is My the point more is, interesting why point. Why would of your, God equip us yeah, with, why would to be God so make women good smart? at school yeah, and yeah, STEM? Yeah, yeah. If women on average were doing really really poorly in STEM and all these, like if men sure. were the one out outgrad- graduating us two to one, then I can understand from a Christian purview saying like, see, God doesn't want you to be good at school because God wants you to focus on these more domestic pursuits. Yeah. But how can you look at all this evidence and think that we're, you know what I mean? We're yeah. so specifically I, designed by God and then deny that. I think I think you've bought the the big lie of feminism that goes back to Mary Wollstonecraft, which is that men are endowed with greater virtue than women. And I think it's just bunk. You're, no. I'm saying the opposite. She's no, the opposite. You're, you're saying, what you're saying is that uh, the, the most important things to do, the most impressive things to do, the, just the greatest stuff to do, is to do what most men do, which is go out and work some job. No, I didn't even. I didn't even at, like moralize. I didn't even say that STEM and aerospace and all these industries that women are good at are even morally good. I was just saying they happen to be good at these things. So but from a Christian purview, you're the one who would ascribe morality saying, to that. You're saying it's it's better to do that. I think because you're saying from a Christian well, purview, because you think from no, a no, Christian no, purview, if, what you're good at is what you should do. So if women are better at child rearing, they should do that. If sex is best used in this specific uh, yeah. use, well, then you, people should do in, that. In in that. Uh, 
narrow reading, then I think it's pretty clear most women are better at raising children than building rocket ships. So I think probably most women would prefer that. But e even more broadly, I think y you're exalting male professions in a foolish way. I, I think that you're, you're... I'm not even hyping them up. I'm just asking you... I think you are hyping From them your up. theist purview, why would God make women so good at STEM and college and all these pursuits if God just wanted us to tap out as soon as we met a man Again, and just focus I'm on not child sure. rearing? Look, the, women do fine on certain tests, but... Uh, we're doing great. I, you're doing Not great. On a lot of tests. Sure. I, <laughs> Better than you. <laughs> uh, well, perhaps. I don't know. No, it's, I mean the future. Uh, of, I defer to your uh, <laughs> knowledge of your. The future you know. of academia is unequivocally female. Do you deny that? I agree that the future of academia is bleak. <laughs> <And> <laughs> so, if, if if you think that it implies that women will dominate academia, then you know you said it, not me. But uh, I don't. I don't think that the future of anything is female. I think the f the future of the human race will be the complementarity of the sexes and marriages and children, or there will be no future of the human oh. race. The future of academia is bleak. Yes, yes, it is indeed, Smooth Mickey. I mean, this is an obvious reality. The education system is completely crumbling. Uh, Professor Bridges, you said several times, you've used a phrase, I want to make sure I understand what you mean by it. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. It, would that be women? So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not recognizing that. Wow, you're saying that I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancy? Do you believe that there, uh, men can get pregnant? No, I don't think women can get <laughs> So you pregnant. are denying that trans people exist? Thank and that leads to violence? Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you? Absolutely. Or are they also treated like this? Where no, you, no, no, they're, they're told that to they're question. opening up people to oh, violence we have a good time questioning. in my class. You should join. Oh, I bet. You might learn a lot. It's controlled by ideology and also financial interests. It is a bloated bureaucracy that is giving out useless degrees with reckless abandon. And for me, online education is obviously the future because you now have startups that are actually becoming becoming certified, whose mission it is to give as much value as possible in the shortest time frame possible. And this in itself is a jarring innovation when it comes to the world of education, because it takes away the monopoly from traditional educational institutes, whose business model when it comes to the more useless degrees is to keep you in this institution for as long as they possibly can to teach you absolutely nothing. But that aside, the most interesting part of that entire exchange for me was learning that God made women so darn good at aerospace engineering and STEM fields in general, that being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now that would imply obviously that women are not only good at these fields, but they're better than men. And this is just demonstrably true in these industries. And this is actually God's plan and that women should be building all of the rockets and doing the science stuff. Well, luckily for her, this is very, very well documented. And you can actually quite easily go and look up the highest ranking people in the world in these fields based on publications and citations. So let's have a look at the data and we will stick to modern day data and people who are alive at the moment and not look at the historical data because obviously the patriarchy was holding women down and now that they're free, they're dominating these fields. So let's check it out. Well, duh. We'll start with mechanical and aerospace engineering scientists, which she obviously said that women are just so good at. Okay, first few, Ted, John, Thomas, Ibrahim, Mosin. Two, 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 two. Women are coming, guys. Just give me one second. It's probably just a coincidence so far. Taifun, Davud, Adrian, Robert, Mark, Allen. They're going to be here somewhere, guys. Just give me a second. Yeah, it's the top 50. So hold on, guys. Let me, this is probably just a coincidence. Let me have a look at the best scientists in the world. Just science 2023 rankings. Okay, we've got Walter. We've got Ronald, Robert, Eric, Maya, Albert, Shizuo, Joanne. There we go, guys. Number eight, Joanne with a capital A. Now, there's going to be more below her, clearly. George, John, Salim, Trevor, Paul, Ralph, Robert, Pierre. Just, there's going to be more here, guys, somewhere. Okay, that's the top 50 for that one. Now, got an unlucky so far, guys, but the data is going to bear out what she said. Now, let's look at mathematics scientists, okay? Gilbert, Stanley, Barry, okay, this is not looking great for her little prognostication there. K 
Okay, top 40. Uh, Ravi, Dimitri, Herbert, Emmanuel, Avi, and Z. Now, there might be a lot of women in these fields in the universities because of, you know, progressivism and what have you. But I think the data is pretty crystal clear with who is excelling in these fields and who is building all of the stuff and doing all of the sciencing. I just went through 150 names and we found one female. On to the next section where they discuss the R18 plus matters. It doesn't seem like religion is a compelling antidote against the vices that you deem to be oppressive. I'm not, if in these yeah. states that have the highest populations of religious people, your type of religion, Christian, why is it that they're indulging in these vices more disproportionately than liberals? Well, again, you know, I love my Protestant friends, but some of them take a looser view of sexual morality than the Catholics do. The Catholics still have a very rigid view. So I think you're making a little bit of an apples and I'm oranges comparison. It too much. Yeah, and but but furthermore, to quote La Rochefoucauld again, hypocrisy is the tribute vice pays to virtue, and and religion is a public thing. So. Uh, we want to pray. We can pray individually. We can avoid looking at porn individually. We can do whatever individually. But we're social creatures. And so if we live in a community that is more likely to uh, put us in the near occasion of sin, we're more likely to fall into that. You know, today, porn is everywhere, right? You can't, you can't drive down the street. You certainly can't open social media without that. And if there's more temptation everywhere, you're more likely to fall into it, even if you know it's wrong. And so now we point to those people. We say, well, they're hypocrites. No, they're not hypocrites. They're human beings. Who they're have victims. A standard and fall, you think they're fall victims to like just the rampant porn industry? Yeah, I think, the, I think the porn industry certainly victimizes people. Do you think porn worsened it more than prior? Like, do you oh, kind of blame sure. the yeah. porn industry? Yeah, and, I think and porn what industry is, the, is awful and should be wait, wiped off the face of the earth. Can we talk yeah. about what consequences you're seeing since the proliferation of porn that makes society so much worse? Like, yeah, totally. Yeah, well, you see, uh, I mean, you know, again, to go back to all those studies, you see a big spike in sexual aggression. You see a big spike in... Wait, wait, no, crime is down since the since since porn went early 2000s. The crime is way down. Yeah. Well, okay, just... I mean, and and domestic way down. violence. Yeah, and I, abortion is way down. Yeah. Yeah. Abor Seems like abortion, no. Abor from, abortion, the, from the early 2000s, yeah. Abortion is unfortunately slightly up even after the, the Dobbs decision. Though if you go into the state-by-state -state data, babies still have been saved and it's somewhat complicated. But since porn became widely available, where what what's worse? Because oh, it's not oh, violence. You're, you're, so what you're saying is... Because there's porn now, people are getting married less, they're having fewer babies, they're no, getting no, pregnant no. less, and maybe they're causes, having fewer I'm just saying if porn just made society just it's so catastrophic, what are the outcomes you're yeah. seeing? Because so it's not violence. Yeah, just, well, well, I think you would say porn is bad in, as, as an end in itself, right? Yeah, it's intrinsically yeah. evil, but but also if you're interested in some you know studies or something. And again, I don't even really buy studies, but uh, in, I think it was 2010 out of the University of Arkansas, a survey of the most popular porn, not all porn, but the most popular porn videos showed 88% uh, depict sexual aggression, verbal or physical. Uh, there was a study that came out about 10 years ago out of Denmark that showed that uh, regular porn use increased misogynistic attitudes, which I totally agree. Uh, there was another study that came out of, I think it was Indiana, uh, a few years ago, which showed that regular porn consumption was correlated with uh, sexual aggressiveness in both men and women, which I don't think is a very good thing. And then there was another study, I forget which state it came out of, in like 2015 or 2019, which showed that uh, porn use and uh, sexual interactions online for, for women were a reliable predictor of in real life sexual violence committed against them. So again, I, I grant you that, you know, yeah, there's a bunch I've, of you've got your studies, I've got my direction, studies. Yeah. But there, if you, in as much as you do believe the social scientific mm. data, there is a lot of evidence that porn has had disastrous consequences. Pixie, do you think you would come to regret doing the porn Not me, fans? but I think some people would. You don't think there's a chance you'll come to regret it? No. What, why would I regret it? If, say, you, you wanted to get married and have kids and you found it harder to... I don't think so because I think that I typically like men. Like, for instance, I always tell this story. Like, before, I didn't have any social media before I started OnlyFans. And, I didn't have, and, like, one guy I was on a date with was like, oh, I love that because you're not showing off your body. I just ghosted him. Like, I just, I don't mm. like men like that. <laughs> I like men that are have similar values to me where they don't correlate sec modesty with morality and that they don't really care. Do you think that guys who like look at a lot of porn and are very pro porn and do you think they tend to make better or worse husbands worse. Well, we know that the ones yeah. that actually have issues with porn the biggest predictor of that is moral incongruence so catholics should not watch porn it seems to have really negative impacts on your marriages and lives but if you're not catholic and you don't have negative attitudes towards porn you are way less do, likely to have issues with it do you think that if you watch porn a lot mm -hmm. you're really into it you're more or less likely to um step out on your marriage 
I don't know if there's any data on well, that. Well, you said a lot, so you're adding kind of like an the the data of, would upwards of ninety percent of men watch porn. I don't know if men who watch porn are more likely to cheat. I haven't seen anything to indicate that. Nor the, would that even be my the social scientific data that I've seen would suggest that. Uh, regular porn use is associated with all sorts of vices and pathologies and uh, including infidel marital infidelity and so that would be one thing you wouldn't want you wouldn't want your husband sleeping around with other women i don't mind if he watches porn and i think a lot of women don't. but if if what i'm saying is if watching porn mm -hmm. made him less virtuous and you know even just the fact that you're trying to cook for the kids right and you're trying to i don't know you're trying to do something and he's just in the bedroom somewhere selfishly doing something that's kind of shameful and you don't brag about it even if you're uh, wrong i watch porn what am i supposed i'm supposed to tell him you don't do it and i'll do it yeah <laughs> well no you, sh you neither of you should do it neither of you should I do want it. that clipped <laughs> so she likes men who watch porn and even before social media she also liked those guys and she never had any interests in these sort of guys that like a humble woman who doesn't sort of put her naked body on the internet <laughs> weirdos well good luck to her with that anyways to defend porn as if it doesn't hurt anybody is just a ridiculous thing to say we all know it despite the fact that everybody watching this has probably had some experience with it but furthermore to act like it actually might be beneficial for people come on now and i think i speak with some authority on this matter because i've really sat on both sides of the fence with this one you see as a younger man especially in my teenage years, before I ever had my first girlfriend and started boxing around the age of 20 or so, I was extremely undisciplined. I blew out to 110 kilos. I used to watch porn all the time. I mean, I would probably be what you consider a porn addict. If you look at the numbers, I think it's three or four times a week. If you watch porn, you're considered a porn addict. And that was the case for a number of years. But growing up in a secular society and not having a fully formed brain as a young man, I never really stopped to think how this might be affecting my neurochemistry, my dopamine levels, my perception of sex fundamentally, my sexual function, my future relationships. I mean, even something so fundamental as seeing a woman naked. Before the internet and before the modern degeneracy, you couldn't just go online and just type in anything you wanted and see thousands of naked women and have them doing whatever pleases your sexual lustful desires. But now you can, and if you do that all the time, then when you see a naked woman in real life, I mean, maybe it's a little bit better, but it's like, eh. Whereas it should be novel and exciting and you should feel that, you should project that onto the person who you're seeing naked if it is a loving relationship. So in those parts of my life when I was younger, I never really thought about this stuff. I just thought I have these urges, feel it all the time, young red-blooded testosterone fueled male and I can open up my computer and I can satisfy that urge in the moment. Or I can go and find a girl on a dating app satisfy that urge. But nowadays, and trust me, I'm not perfect by any means. I mean, that devil still sits firmly on my shoulder. Since I've started to really take this seriously and take this moral question seriously, the difference is night and day. Since I've been able to take more control of these urges, I feel more clear, more content, less distracted, don't have that underlying sense of moral bankruptcy, feel more in control, more intentional. And my thoughts towards relationships are much more in the direction of what's meaningful and long-term. But even more so, as my view on sex has started to change, especially over the last year or so, the powerful force of porn and promiscuity on our culture, and especially on the developing mind, has become ever more lucid to me. So yeah, personally, I don't think that it's a reasonable position to take at all to say that porn is not harming people and not harming our society, our culture, our civilization for that matter, let alone it being in any way beneficial. Now on to the next part. Why do you want your own house? Um, so I could just be financially dependent, pick where I want to live. Even, even if you're married? Um, yeah, like I would probably buy a house before pursuing dating for marriage, yeah. So what if, and then he would have his own house and you'd... I guess from there we would figure it out from there if we wanted to sell the house or both live in the house. Like I'd be fine moving a guy into my house, yeah. But, and you would still own the house or you'd split the house with him or, he, or you'd transfer it to him. I, I wouldn't transfer it to him. It would be my house for sure. You'd have separate finances. Uh, I don't know about that, but in terms of like where I want to live, I'm 100% picking that on my own and getting my own house. Okay. But, but so if the man comes uh, and so goes... So your bank accounts would go together, but you'd keep the house in your name. Um, if we're married, I guess we'd figure it out as we go, but I'd probably like date someone and then, I don't know, I just don't want to be dependent. I don't want to like You don't want to be dependent. So, uh, that, right, exactly. You don't want to be dependent. So why get married? 
why get married? Yeah, I, I could be independent. It'd be I could live on my mm. own. I could hire a maid. I could hire a cook. I could just whatever you know. I don't want to be independent. I want to be dependent on my wife. I love my wife. I want to make a vow that I'm going to stay with my wife forever and have a nice big family. And I don't want to be separated at all. I want to be one flesh with my wife. If I didn't want to do that, if I wanted to just be on my own but have someone to mitigate the loneliness and occasionally sleep with, why get married at all? I, I do want to get married. I am going to eventually date to marry, I think. Like, my goal is to eventually start dating in, like, a year, date in under three months, get engaged, get married. I don't want to do the, like, multi-year yeah, dating okay, that's and, good. like, cohabitating before. I think that's a joke. Great, I think it's a waste it. of time. But, wh but, I'm but also, why do it? I'm also cognizant of the fact that men today are a joke, and there's a one in four chance that your husband's going to commit infidelity, and I don't believe in necessarily, like, pursuing There are things you can do to mitigate those stats, you. though. Mitigating infidelity for yeah. on my husband's part, what? You Being a Catholic? fucking blow doll for him? Y y well, <laughs> no, I wouldn't recommend that either. Uh, uh, no, uh, the things you could do are is marry men who, f for instance, don't recognize the sacramental reality of divorce. Just to use one example. He's saying because I said infidelity. <laughs> Or, or who recognize that infidelity is every uh, man I've ever sin. dated has been Christian conservative, and at least one of them I found an Oculus in his closet where he's watching VR porn. In my experience, like I said, at the macro level, it's usually these Christian conservatives who are the most <laughs> porn addicted, yeah, and so at a micro level, these men I'm dating. You, a lot you of date a lot of these opinion. Christian conservatives. Well, There's I'm, something about them that attracts you. Well, mm -hmm. I'm waiting till marriage. Good. Oh, good. So you don't. Okay. Well, look, that, I think that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I love that you as a feminist are very attracted to Christian conservative men. I think that's good for society broadly. Um, it's bad that these guys are like looking at porn or whatever. Uh, I don't know that that necessarily implies that once they get married, they would either continue to do that or would step out on you and cheat and have an affair or whatever. I, it does seem to me, though, that certain groups of men are less likely than others to sleep with other women. And so you know, if you want to have that good, stable life and maybe uh, overcome your fears of being dependent on someone yeah. who might be a total loser, then you might might want to make sure you don't pick a total loser. But even stepping out of sight, I mean, I give you those stats, stats about correlation between religious men and pornography consumption and prostitution purchasing. So yeah, like, some, how can you some, say that? Some people who are broadly religious of some sect or other uh, do that, and all pe people are uh, tempted by things. But I don't think that we can just throw our hands in the air and fall into a kind of romantic quietism and say, well, they're all just, these, do these men are all dogs, they're all cats. No, actually, some men are more inclined to virtue than others. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that might, if you... But based uh, off the stats, it would seem the religious men are less inclined to virtue. No, if they're not watching a, that's, that's porn and buying sex. That's ridiculous. You're, you're telling me that, that uh, but I gave Christian you men are more, are more mm -hmm. like... No, no, no. You gave me a stat and said, uh, you know, certain red states with certain religious groups consume certain kinds of porn or whatever. But the more Christians you're, you're, are in you're, a state, at, the more pornography consumption and searches there are it, in prostitution purchases, yes. It would seem that perhaps there are other factors at play there. Like when you're talking about a full state, I don't know, when you're talking about class, income, when you're talking about education, when you're talking about fa family formation in the first place, when you're talking, for goodness sakes, when you're talking about geography, you know, we're talking about whole states here and you're pulling one variable out and saying, see, there it is. The correlation is the causation. That's crazy. So this young lady claims repeatedly on this show that the religious states are consuming so much more porn. And I think that her contention is that that correlation means that religious men are actually more likely to watch porn in relationships and maybe to be unfaithful as well. And therefore, ladies, you're better off avoiding these religious men if you want a long-term sustainable relationship. You need to be going for those liberal atheists. Sounds like good advice. Also very measurable. So let's see how the raw numbers stack up with her hypothesis. So what we're about to look at is from Pornhub itself. It is from the horse's mouth, if you will. <laughs> Starting from the total number of pages viewed per state, our statisticians, imagine your job was a Pornhub statistician, <laughs> divided that by each state's population to get the page views per capita. The average number of pages per visit are pretty close, 9.33 pages in blue states and 9.2 pages in red states. But on a per capita basis, the gap starts to widen. Blue states view 137 pages per capita, whereas red states view 121 pages per capita. 
a 13% difference. Now we can see here that Pornhub has been good enough to show the red and blue states. And at the top here, you've got all of the ones who consume the most and at the bottom, the ones who consume the least. Now we can see that the red states are all the way down the bottom consuming the least. But if I was to say that that proved my point, that would be intellectually lazy because yes, there is a correlation between political views and religious beliefs, but it's not exactly a direct correlation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go have a look at Pew Research Center here. And we're going to have a look at the most religious states in America to the least religious states in America. Then we're going to go back to Pornhub's chart. Then we're going to get the five states who watch the most porn according to the Pornhub charts, Kansas, Nevada, Illinois, Colorado, and Massachusetts. And the five states that watch the least, Arkansas, Idaho, West Virginia, South Dakota, and Wyoming. And we are going to do a little test to see how religious they are. We're going to take each of these states and give them a score depending on where they fit in the most to least religious chart. We're going to add them all up and see how it goes. So of the five states that are the highest in porn consumption, you have Kansas, which is number 19 on the most religious. You have Nevada, which is number 35, Illinois, number 33, Colorado, number 41, Massachusetts number 50. That in total equals to 178. Now for the five states with the least most consumption. We've got Arkansas number five, Idaho 33, West Virginia number seven, South Dakota 16, Wyoming 22. Equaling up to just 83. Now obviously the fact that I arrived at a much higher number when it comes to the top five porn consuming states in America means that these states rank way lower on religious beliefs. In fact, the number was more than double. So these numbers directly and emphatically prove that the theory that the places where the most religious people reside are definitely not the ones watching the most porn. And ladies, if you're young and single out there on the dating market, I would seriously recommend not taking this young lady's advice. And this segues nicely because the other thing that she talked about was the fact that she only dates Christian conservative men who eventually go on to reveal their true colors as VR porn watching degenerates. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm playing, playing football. You ain't playing football. Well, I mean, I do wonder if she's thought about her dating situation from the following perspective. Now, she definitely has some very attractive qualities. I mean, she's obviously physically very beautiful. Seems intelligent in the sense that she would probably do well on tests at university. But we know that wisdom doesn't always follow intelligence. She also says that she's a virgin, which for a Christian man is a big green flag. It shows discipline, shows character, and also is a good indicator for a successful long-term relationship. But, and it is a big but, she is a liberal feminist. I don't know what her religious beliefs are, but she's definitely not a Christian, so we're going to call her an atheist. And last but not least, she has an OnlyFans where she exposes herself to thousands of horny men online. Now I know some good young Christian conservative men, ones that are in the dating market looking for somebody to eventually settle down with and have a family, myself included. And I can assure you that a woman can be a 10 out of 10 and can be as virgin as the mother Mary herself. But if she has those said values, then dating her would be unthinkable. When I'm dating, if I even get so much as a scent of liberal or feminist or atheist, it is an instant disqualifier because we have fundamentally different worldviews. And in a relationship, she has to be able to trust my decision-making, my judgment, and ultimately my leadership. So not saying that there's nobody out there for her. Obviously, she's going to be an attractive candidate to a lot of people, but not Christian conservative men. Find yourself a liberal atheist feminist man. Why would Christian conservative men want to date somebody with values that are antithetical to their own. Why would they want a woman like that raising their children? Why would they want to come home after a long, hard day's work to those sorts of conversations? So what I'm saying ultimately is that they may have said that they were Christian conservatives, but I think if you dug a little bit deeper, you'd find that they didn't quite have their worldview aligned. So anyways, rant over for today from me, guys. As per usual, you can hit those links just below. You can find me, Twitter and Instagram, like I said before, doing book reviews these days. If you guys would like to subscribe to the channel, you can click right here. And if you would like to watch another video, you can hit one of these bad boys right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Jotosnake TV, keeping you armed 
and dangerous.